daily connection to God and His Word. Good morning. How you doing this morning? Well, sir, you're right about it. It's a good looking Saturday morning, a sanctified Saturday, so we'll call it a spectacular Saturday morning. <laughs> ah, man, I, I tell you, man, you get up in the morning practicing those words, don't you? <laughs> to be sharing the good news this morning for a glad word causes the heart to be uplifted. Good news causes the heart to rejoice. And we're delighted to be sharing that good news that BB is talking about, that he saw in us things that we could never have seen. Don't understand why he loved us so much. All a mystery, but in order to save us, in order to save the day, because of love, the Lord Jesus Christ put himself in harm's way. Well, friend, we announce that good news to you every single day. Every single day, we bring you the report of the Lord. That's what Isaiah called it in Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. And so, friend, that's what we're declaring, the gospel, the good news, the power of God. And we're talking about the transforming power of the gospel as a, the mercy of part of the mercy and grace of God extended to us. As Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first. And to the Greek, all to Gentile, and to everyone who believes. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hey, let me just pause for a moment and give two invitations. First of all, today at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be online virtually for Connected Strength and the Men's Forum that we sponsor monthly or men from across the city and across the nation and sometimes from around the world from other countries are online. And we are together united, uh, iron sharpening iron to empower one another, to equip one another, to reign and serve as kings and priests unto our God to be the difference that makes the difference. It's at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you go on our page at Connected Church at YouTube, uh, on YouTube, Facebook, uh, we're going to be uh, live there. But you can also join the conversation through connecting through Zoom. And uh, it's an interactive dialogue. And we're talking about disruption that brings transformation. Disruption that brings transformation. That's part of the overall series that we're in. Uh, at Connected Church, and we're going to continue that in the men's forum. The second invitation that I'd like to extend to you is 10.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. On Sunday morning, we're at 5650 Sanderson Street Northwest, Sweet R, the Connect Center, Huntsville, Alabama, 35805. We are just west east of the new Mid-City District Development, the south end of that development. 
um, on Sanderson Street and just uh, west of Sam's Wholesale Club. If you're standing in the parking lot of Sam's Wholesale Club, if you look on the hill, you'll see the Connect Center. And we love to see you there. Well, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of Christ. This is one of the great mercies and grace of God extended to us. Uh, we started off talking about words. And Pete was talking about my use of these adjectives for every day. You know, words are powerful. We, Through faith, we understand. It says in Hebrews 11 that... The things that would appear were not made of things that do appear, but it was made by the words of God. You see, God's word, whenever he uh, declares, speaks its word, it has transforming power in it to produce results, to produce what he intends. Uh, B.B. was talking about how that he saw in us things that we could never have seen, don't understand why he loves so much. It's all a mystery. See, that's the way God works. God sees the end from the beginning, and then he begins to declare it and speak it. This is what the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ is all about. The man who wrote this verse in Romans chapter 1 is a man whose name was Saul. This man was not a believer in Jesus Christ. Not only was he not a believer, just someone who wasn't interested, but he was totally passionate that it was a lie, that it was an untruth, in so much so that he aggressively and intentionally persecuted and had put to death all of those who believed in this Jesus Christ, those who followed him. At that time, they called it the way. He persecuted those who were in the way, following the way, the truth, the life, Jesus. But one day in Acts chapter 9, this man was on his road to Damascus, and he had a writ uh, from the, the authorities as a centurion himself to harangue and harass and to, to persecute and put to death these believers in Christ, these followers of Christ, and Christ himself confronted him on that road, and he looked up, and as he fell to the ground, he looked up, and he says, uh, as Christ said to him, uh, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you, Lord? You see, the Jesus then began to reveal himself to this man, and in his revealing of himself to this man, it transformed this man's life to the point that he embraced the good news about Jesus and became one of the most prolific spreaders of this good news about Jesus uh, that there ever was to walk the earth, who wrote for us most of uh, a good portion, a good percentage of what we call the New Testament in the Bible. Now, yesterday I was talking about the Lord Jesus as he returned in when in the temple in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, when he came into the temple, he took the book of the prophet Isaiah and began to declare, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, watch this, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, hmm, to declare good news. Listen, let me tell you how important the news is. We have entire stations now dedicated to news. Uh, I could call a few of the names out, and uh, even whether it be the radio, uh, there's news networks by radio, there's news networks uh, on television, we have social media streams all pumping the news to us, and then we have social media tools that are constantly reporting to us news, some of it we can use and some of it totally useless, you know. I won't call the names of these various platforms out, but just information, people publishing videos about all kinds of things, just anything, you know, uh, but it's a constant stream of information. And you know what? We, we have those tools and we avail ourselves of those tools, whether useful or unuseful, and we entertain ourselves with them, we educate and inform ourselves with them. How much more the good news about Jesus? Do you not know 
that that good news it will change your life. It's the most important news that you will hear any single day. And you need to hear the news because the good news that Jesus came to bring, he says, will bring uh, uh, the gospel to the poor. Uh, it will heal the brokenhearted. Uh, it will bring deliverance to the captives. It will uh, bring recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty those who are oppressed, and it will declare the acceptable year of the Lord. What news are you listening to? Are you hearing the good news? The good news will cause faith to arise in your heart as hope springs anew and you are transformed by the good news of Jesus Christ. This has been an outreach of Connected Church. Connect with us, connected-church.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, right here on this Gospel Explosions Outreach to the Tennessee Valley and beyond every single day of the dream of change is alive. And Jesus is our joy. Knowing this, together, you and I are the difference that makes the difference as we awaken to God's purpose of knowing him and his love for us and mobilize to his mission of making him known and sharing his love with others. That's good news on this sanctified and spectacular Saturday morning, Pete. Hey, Amen. The two S's. <laughs> hey, we, we, we appreciate that message this morning, Pastor. We look forward to hearing another one in the morning when we have another Christ in Action broadcast. Yes, sir. It sounds great to me. Keep on doing what you're doing, and Lord willing, we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, hey, listen. Um, again, those invitations are my personal invitation to all the men. Come on, men, wherever you are. Uh, we, this is an opportunity for all men. This is uh, without walls, regardless of your background, affiliation, uh, this is brethren coming together in unity and in one accord, uh, again, to strengthen, empower, equip, encourage us all to, to reign as kings and priests unto our God and our King of kings and our Lord of lords, Jesus the Christ. And uh, in so doing, uh, to be the difference that makes the difference in this world. And also, again, uh, we just look forward to connecting with you at 10.15 a.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. Uh, please come and assemble together as we encourage to do in the more and the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching. And of course, uh, if you're not able to come in person, then we will meet you, greet you, love you online and, and share the word of God with you. Until tomorrow, remember this, uh, until 10 o'clock for the men. Remember this, God loves himself some you, and we do too. You matter to God, and you matter that to us do have a spectacular Saturday on purpose. And remember the gospel, the good news.